Today on Close Up, how students may be participating in legal activity. And the city of Rock Hill raises awareness for child abuse. It was right here at the McCrory lunch counter where the Friendship Nine's jail no bail story had begun. From the Department of Mass Communication at Winthrop University, you're watching Winthrop Close Up. Welcome to Winthrop Close Up. I'm Jerry R. Manning. And I'm Melissa Noble. Football has always been a rumor on campus, but get ready, set, hype. Reporter Stephanie Harris fills us in on the latest developments of the possible athletic addition. So, no intention of changing the student faculty ratio. Now, football, on the other hand, though, could be part of the strategy. President Jane Marie Constock held the first public meeting about a possible football team here at Winthrop. President Comstock and Winthrop's athletic director Tom Hickman discussed the estimated cost and benefits of a potential team. Key considerations included whether a football team, along with the marching band, would increase enrollment and balance the male to female ratio on campus, improving student life and of course the revenue and cost that comes along with the sport. I think it will increase the school spirit. I think people will get into football games more um, and it gives more of a reason to come to our school. I think not having a football team turns a lot of kids away. With an estimated cost of $11.5 million, not everyone is rooting for a new team. Residents of the Rock Hill community and students are both concerned with the addition of a football team diminishing other programs in athletics and academics. Winthrop's culture is completely different from a football campus-based culture. I think that right now we have a, a university that's derived off of, you know, our academics and our business essentially. And so I think that the cost of bringing a football team is too great for the benefit. The Board of Trustees is taking everyone's opinions into consideration, but a decision won't come anytime soon. They need to look at this process as a marathon and not as a sprint because it's going to take a, a long time not only to go through the decision-making process, but if you get through the decision-making process and the decision is to move forward, then you've still got a long road ahead of you before you ever um, throw the first football out on the field. Football is a beloved sport across the South, but only time will tell if Winthrop will join the ranks. Stephanie Harris, Winthrop Close Up. The Lady Eagles basketball team was invited to the NCAA tournament. Chris Gaitan was there for the excitement. After the Lady Eagles won the Big South Championship in March, they qualified to enter the 2014 NCAA tournament. Tensions were high in the room as the tournament bracket was revealed live on the big screens. Then the moment of truth. The Lady Eagles will play Duke University in the first round. They bonded together at just the right time, and that is what it took uh, to get it done. I wish. Coach Cook is very relieved to find out that the Lady Eagles will play Duke in the first round of the tournament. So, how do the Lady Eagles feel about that? Um, I'm really excited. I can't wait. I've never been in this situation before, so it's just something new for all of us. Really, I've never felt this way before. Uh, it's a great feeling for the team that we got a, a big team coming up, but we have to take it one step at a time to get an upset, hopefully. Chris Gaitan, Winthrop Close. To see the Lady Eagles in action, check out their schedule on the Winthrop website. The men of Pi Kappa Alpha Fraternity helps to improve bike paths in the Rock Hill community. The men will bike for eight miles around Rock Hill in support of the cycling initiative that will build roads for bikers. Fraternity brother Matt Pippenbring says that his fraternity is grateful for the opportunity. We just recently uh, formed a partnership with Rock Hill. Uh, we started this last year, but we've been doing bikeathons for decades. The brothers hope to raise $10,000. For more information, call Rock Hill Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Department. Coming up on Close Up, how the Rock Hill community is encouraging people to read more. Also, we get an update on the missing Malaysian flight. Stay tuned to find out why this poll is important to the community. 
Now time to check on the stories making national news. Alexandria Savage joins us from the Winter Plus Up News Center. Welcome to the News Center. I'm Alexandria Savage. In the latest on the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, two ships have re retrieved a number of objects from the southern Indian Ocean, but so far there's no evidence linking any of the items to the missing airliner. The objects reco were recovered in the newly revised search area about 1,100 kilometers north of where crews were looking previously. Anti-government protesters in Thailand launched a mass rally in the capital, Bangkok, to push for national reform before a new general election. The protesters say they will bo boycott a new general election unless national reform is implemented first. Crews are working nonstop to find victims in the debris of a mudslide that happened in a rural area of Washington state killing at least 24 people. It is considered one of the deadliest landslides in U.S. history. Nearly two, do two dozen people are remain missing. Seattle-based Starbucks is donating $100,000 to help those affected by the landslide. The coffee giant released an online statement saying $50,000 will go to the American Red Cross. Another $50,000 will be given to the United Way of Snohomish County Recovery Fund. Back to you, Melissa. Child abuse is a serious issue, and to spread awareness, a public seminar was held. Cameron Powell was there for the scoop. The month of April is known as Child Abuse Awareness Month, and to spread the word, a public seminar was held at the Rock Hill City Amphitheater. Attendees each received a balloon and a free ticket to the York County Children's Museum, and one attendee talks about why he supports the seminar. Uh, I'm out here supporting child abuse awareness uh, because the kids need our help and uh, as unfortunate as it is, uh, programs like this help spread the word on child abuse awareness. Speakers at the seminar included the Mayor of York County, the Department of Social Services, Judge David Guyton, and even House of Representatives Republicans Thomas Pope and Ralph Norman. A crime against those that are so defenseless. One speaker talks about why being aware of child abuse is so important. If we don't know about the abuse, then there's no way that we're going to be able to go in and protect the children and provide services to their parents to hopefully prevent any future abuse. At the end of the seminar, there was a balloon releasing to remember the children who have fallen due to child abuse. The first set of balloons represented children who have passed away while the second set represented the survivors of child abuse. A short performance by the Palmetto School Children's Choir closed the event with a few words from the head counselor of the Catawba Family Center. A lot of times they don't have a voice of their own, so the whole point of us getting together today is to, to give them a voice and to promote that us as an adults need to promote that for them. Be sure to be on the lookout for more child abuse awareness events all this month. Cameron Powell, Winthrop Close Up. Up next on Close Up, a summary of President Comstock's inauguration ceremony. And hot chocolate lured students in during inauguration week. Winthrop Close Up has an inside scoop on the inaugural events to welcome our 10th president. Jane Marie Comstock is officially Winthrop's newest president. Trustees, faculty, delegates, and students filled the seats of Burns Auditorium at the presidential inauguration. South Carolina State Senator Senator Wes Hayes spoke in acceptance of President Comstock as well as reading a letter from Governor Nikki Haley. In addition to the crowd, presidents of other universities joined in to reflect on their personal experiences with President Comstock. President Comstock was all smiles, hugs, and tears by the conclusion of her ceremony. During the speech, Comstock said that she wanted to lower tuition rates and increase the number of Winthrop graduates. Inaugural events has something even sweeter than lowering tuition rates, chocolate. From universities around the country, Kicking off this week, the president had chocolate and desserts, baiting students to come out and support her at her inauguration and the events throughout the week. Madam President was warm and even shared some laughs with students, 
while noting the times of the athletic events. During Inauguration Week, Winthrop had the opportunity to commemorate a late priest while spreading a sense of peace in the community. Reporter Chris Gautan shares more. Winthrop kicked off Inauguration Week with the dedication of a campus peace poll in celebration of the life of Father David Valtiero, a Catholic priest. Valtiero dedicated his life to peace, giving more than 35 years of service at the Rock Hill Oratory. But more than anything else, I think, <laughs> David was himself a man of peace, a peaceful man. Father Valtier was admired in the community. Dr. Peter John Judge, Chair of Philosophy and Religious Studies, was happy when he was asked to speak at the ceremony. Pretty well. I was very honored to be asked to do it. I was a member of his uh, congregation. Um, he was a campus minister for us. I'm a Roman Catholic myself. And, uh, uh, yeah, we, were, we worked together on a number of things, and uh, he was a good friend. Evelyn Hanneman from the Baptist Peace Fellowship of North America was also happy to see that the university commemorated Father Valtierra's legacy with a peace poll. It's, it's wonderful that uh, Winthrop campus is going to have this peace poll because uh, peace and justice are two of the most important things in the world. Uh, without that, our lives are pretty miserable. So it's wonderful that we have this peace poll and uh, dedicated to such a wonderful person that meant so much to many people on this campus. The poll was unveiled by four international students from China, France, Iran, and Saudi Arabia, who represented the spread of peace in the world. This peace poll lies here in Hardin Gardens. Each side of the poll offers a message of peace in a different language. One Winthrop student is excited that they got to be part of the ceremony. Uh, it was really uh, good to see the different types of cultures that were present, um, different international students that were here, different um, students um, from around the Winthrop campus, as well as Dr. Comstock herself who managed to make it to the event, which I was happy um, to you know, experience. The poll will continue to spread peace throughout York County for years to come. Chris Gaitan, with their close-up. The peace poll is just one part of our Winthrop community. Do you know what happens on campus 24-7? Mass communication and integrated marketing communication students collaborated to make one masterpiece, showing life at Winthrop. The 14 minutes video showcased events of February 19th. Students and faculty members shared some laughs and giggles while watching the video. One foreign exchange student said she liked the video because it gave her a chance to see what happens around Winthrop University at night. No, it was very good and we can see uh, everything about Winthrop, so it was very good. Students of both concentrations seem to be proud of the final product. From garnet and gold to blue and white, there are rumors of change around Winthrop's campus. I went out to put these rumors to rest. It out that there is no rebranding initiative. Uh, Winthrop is unique because we have three primary colors. We have garnet, we have gold, and we have blue. But most students, and even some faculty, are unaware of this fact. And many more just don't like the idea of change. As an alum, change is good. But the colors, garnet and gold, man, that's Winthrop. You can't change the colors. All, everything I have is garnet and gold. Winthrop University doesn't only have an unusual number of school colors. It also has more than one logo. One of them um, expresses more of an academic identity, that's the Tillman Hall logo. And then we have one that expresses more of an athletic identity, and that's the Garnet and Gold, and uh, that includes the uh, university's initials. As rumors whirl around campus, students hope that their voice will be heard. I feel like whenever you are going to change something as, as big as the colors or the statement or anything that we stand for, you do need to at least get the students' input because it, we, did, we did choose to come here. And we chose to come here because of the culture of, of this university. Though the school has gone through many changes in its image over the years, each generation takes pride in their experience here.
Entertainment news is still to come. Plus, Winthrop encourages students to be responsible behind the wheel. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Stay tuned to find out how you can end up in a cell like this. AT&T is encouraging students to stop texting while driving. The company is pairing with Campus Wellness Services to promote the It Can Wait program, encouraging students to be responsible behind the wheel. Students pledged to be more careful and took a crash course in driving while distracted. <laughs> the majority have crashed. We've had, over the three days, we've had four people to make it to the end. And primarily that's been because they have not responded to the text. Um, so that's why they have made it to the end. Students pledge to have fun, but be aware of their surroundings and to drive safely. Campus Wellness Services also discourages driving under the influence. Marijuana use is illegal in most states, but this doesn't stop some students from lighting up. Reporter Alexandria Savage investigates where the illegal activity may lead. Cash register for use it, possessing it or using marijuana, that cash register just keeps going cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Marijuana originated as a cure for euphoria. In ancient times dating back to 2737 BC, in World War II the crop became heavily cultivated, becoming a popular form of recreation. I think it should either be heavily decriminalized or legalized. I think the legalization process would take a lot longer. Marijuana is still illegal in the state of South Carolina, and so when students are found smoking or found in possession, typically they're going to get cited or going to refer to my office for violating that student conduct rule. I was stupid and I used and I got caught. I regret it, but it's something I'm working on. Where I'm from, it's legal, so I should have left it at home. I mean, like, kids get drinking tickets. I won't say left and right, but if anybody were to be caught with marijuana, then you do almost immediately lo you do lose your scholarship. For even a first offense, you can find yourself in a cell like this if you can't pay the fine. The $570 fine, and then if it's your second offense, it's a $1,000 fine. So a first-time violation of our item F drugs would typically be either a warning or probation and a referral to one of our partners. Keystone Substance Abuse Services is our number one referral source. I had to pay a fine, go talk to the dean, and now I'm, getting, I'm doing some Keystone classes to figure out where the problem in my behavior started. Marijuana just costs you. That's the bottom line, it costs. Although hemp may have been helpful at a time, the problem it creates now may not be worth the trouble. Alexandria Savage, Winthrop Close Up. Winthrop University is encouraging student safety, especially while drinking alcohol. The school held a seminar in Diggs just before spring break. Students were able to see the effects of texting while driving and driving under the influence in controlled simulator. Students were also offered free mock cocktail, cocktails and condoms. One student says he learned a lot from the event. I learned a lot at the safety seminar. I even did the DUI obstacle course. Learned a lot of helpful pointers for the future. A group of civil rights activists gained a new tool to explain an event that landed them in jail over half a century ago. Their story, coming up on With Their Close Up. Welcome to Arson Entertainment, I'm Daisy Burrows. The saying is, you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. I'll take you back in time as I meet the Friendship Nine and the author telling their story. We were tired of being treated less than first class citizens and something needed to be done. And we decided that we were the ones to do it. Clarence Graham, a surviving member of the Friendship Nine, 
recalls the nonviolent sit-in that landed him and nine others in jail 53 years ago. No one really wants to go to jail because jail actually means you're not free. And uh, we knew that when we walked in that we weren't going to be free. It was right here at the McCrory's lunch counter where the Friendship Nine sat to place an order for their meal and were taken by police officers through that back door. We knew we were serving 30 days on the chain gang of hard labor. And it was fearful, but we decided it was worth it, the risk to do it. Learning about the Friendship Nine's courage became inspiration for children's author Kimberly P. Johnson. She and I sat down to talk about why she wanted to write a book about their journey. I had to do it because our children need to know we cannot forget how important these movements and the struggles were. Joy and disbelief from the new book was felt by multiple members of the Friendship Nine. They hope to make it a part of their school visits. When she called and say I got a preamble of the book ready for you guys to read, man, that was that was that was almost how I felt when I got out of jail. This is going to give us a tool to use uh, for, for these kids where they can finally believe what happened and the adults won't be afraid to, to go back and remember. To learn more about the Friendship Nine or to get a copy of No Fear for Freedom, visit the author's website at www.simplycreativeworks.com. Reading has always been an important focus here at Winthrop, and now a new library is opening its doors. Terry Plum of Eden Terrace has the first little free library here in Rock Hill. You simply choose a book that you like, and when you're finished reading it, return it. I think it's really great that someone's doing something like this in our community. It's a really fun and creative way for people to start reading books again. Uh, I chose Number of the Stars. So far, Mr. Plum's library is the only one in Rock Hill, but we hope more will come. If you have any juicy entertainment gossip, tweet us here at Winthrop Close Up. If you have any story ideas, you can send us an email at the address listed below. Or tweet us at Winthrop Close Up. We'll see you next time on Winthrop Close Up.